All right, welcome everybody to the News Channel 3 Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, assuming that I put enough tinfoil on the reflectors to get a pretty good signal coming through here. But if the signal drops out, we'll be back with you as soon as we possibly can. If that doesn't work, we're going to try semaphore and maybe two tin cans and a long string. So thank you very much for dropping by on Sunday night. Want to check out more about the forecast before you head to bed this evening? I know you stopped by to take a look and see what's going on more with weather. I'm sure you'd like to do more than just take a look and see what's going on with the forecast via numbers on a sheet so that's what I'm here for and give you ideas to what's happening with the weather into tomorrow this is our quick weather update for those of you who have never been here before for this this is our opportunity to give you a little bit more about what's going on with the forecast and we're also going to be talking about something rather special especially for this time of the year not everybody can make it home for the holidays so if you would like to know more <clears throat> excuse me, about what's going on with whether where the troops are. If you have friends, loved ones, relatives serving in the United States military at various outposts around the globe, we'll talk more about what it looks like and more importantly how you can get the information online. It's not classified, it's readily available, it's worldwide weather, but you may not have seen anything like that before. There are some good links out there including to the World Meteorological Organization. We'll talk about that. Plus, Yes, I said it before, and yes, I say it again, there is going to be the possibility of snow in the forecast. Wait just a few seconds for that to sink in, but as you hear that, it's a good possibility that you went from snow to blizzard and or way over here on the other side of the peg, staying home and probably... Uh, sticking around for like school being out and snowman building and snow ice cream not gonna happen okay nothing like that gonna be going on if everything works we may see some snow showers as we get into around the area of Thursday morning but that's gonna be about it mixed in with the rainfall there I said it I feel better now as again we'll be talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit so stay tuned for all of that let's start I'll show you what's going on with tomorrow morning on the school bus forecast it is going to be again a bit on the brisk side in the morning temperatures in the mid to upper 30s 40s by lunchtime a little bit on the cool side could be some thunder out there as well and increasing chances of showers and thunderstorms uh, out across the area as we go into dismissal time tomorrow but we're talking about the heavier possibility into tomorrow evening more on that in just a little bit our exclusive and tongue firmly in cheek cough temp decks if you've never seen this before the coffee temperature beverage recommendation index based on what the weather is going to be doing just as an idea to plan ahead for your early morning coffee run. Some people like, again, a very hot cup of java. Some people like iced frothy coolness in a more of a mocha iced type situation. Your coffee temperature, your business, if you burn the roof of your mouth, that's your own business. We are not recommending anything like that. You get to choose, and you need to take your own coffee safety into consideration. So just keep that in mind. In the meantime, for tomorrow, given the weather, as we go into Monday, probably a hot cup of java throughout the day. Sometimes we see, again, the possibility of going toward an iced coffee in the afternoon. Doesn't really look that way into tomorrow although it might get warm enough in some areas, if that. Rest of the evening tonight, we've got clouds out there starting to clear by just a little bit, but not by much. Mostly cloudy skies into around overnight. Traffic on I-40 and I-55 looks like it's moving along pretty nicely. Downtown Memphis on the horizon from West Memphis, Arkansas. Melinda Riggins, snow would be pretty, just no accumulation. I think we can probably manage that. That's about as good as it gets for right now, but stay tuned for more. 40s in West Memphis, winds north at about 5. Traffic light and getting lighter as we go throughout the evening. Looks like a bit of an accident or something taking place just south of uh, the Park Avenue overpass between there and Quince Avenue, something over on the side of the roadway, and it looks like maybe something going on in the uh, northbound lanes as well, so something to take a look at there if you're traveling in that direction. Cotton Exchange camera downtown, lights of the main bridge, the Hernando de Soto Bridge are off Mud Island, back toward the Mud Island Channel and the Wolf River Harbor, downtown Memphis, seen on Riverside Drive down here and over toward Mud Island and just to the west of the pyramid here near the Visitor Center. Visibility is pretty good. The rainfall from yesterday gone all the way over into eastern parts of Tennessee where they desperately needed some of it. And this stuff down here is going to be heading up our direction into tomorrow. So we've got this nice little kind of pause in between the chances of rainfall coming on through. We do still have a little bit of drizzle. We've ramped the sensitivity of the radar up up as much as possible and this is what you wind up with so what is all this that I'm gesturing the wiggly finger bits toward well it's not much it's just light mist at best but that's the neat thing about 1 million watts of power you can usually get a pretty good amount 
of very light precipitation detected out there, and that's all we have left. Heaviest activity from just south of uh, Jackson, Bolivar, down toward northern Mississippi and eastern Arkansas, so just enough to mess up your windshield, and that's about it. Shelly Jean Simmons, thank you very much for the kind words. Airport delays, no problem seen at Memphis International for this evening. Winds out of the east at about 3, and no delay, well, delays of 15 minutes or less, and that trend expected to hold steady. The only place we've had some problems this evening has been around Newark, and that appears to be not much of a problem. Now delays being reported at Memphis International Airport. More details on what's going on out there, go to fly.faa.gov. Temperatures on WeatherNet 3, which you can get through wreg.com slash weather. Lower to mid 40s right now. Winds have died down considerably, but a bit breezy in some parts of the Mid-South, so I would expect a bit of a wind chill into early tomorrow morning. Visibility right now dropping in parts of the area. Dyersburg, Jackson, Corinth reporting 1.2 miles at this time. Uh, Vanessa Viv Miller, no, I'm not kidding about that, believe it or not. And as of right now, it is in the forecast, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So stick around for that. Visibility will be getting a little bit worse into tomorrow morning. We'll talk about that in just a little while. 14 hundredths of an inch, that's all that Memphis wound up with on the Almanac page for radar today for any rainfall out there. We're still behind for the month by about a quarter of an inch, and we should be at 7,800. We've only got about a half an inch or so in the rain gauge. We are losing our surplus six inches plus for the year. We've been very dry for the last few months, so what was about 12 to 14 inches above has now dwindled to about half a foot of rainfall at best. High temperature today, 42. High, high, pardon me, high of 49, low of 42. Normal temperatures are 55 and 38. Record low today hasn't been broken since 1893, and a record low that is almost about 20 years old, 78, set back in 1998, just after I got here. For the rest of the evening tonight, News Channel 3 at 10, more clouds across the mid south, temperatures back in the mid upper 40s, and then maybe some partial clearing past about midnight as some drier air scoops on down. But we're not going to be done with the cloud cover just yet this is where we're going to be seeing more clouds into tomorrow morning around the time news channel 3's todd demers is on the air uh, for daybreak joe Har harold strauser snow for christmas uh, odds are against us on that uh, anytime we have a Christmas coming up, our odds are less than 1 in 10, and this year looks even worse than that. So fractions of a percentage point out of 10 uh, for this year, according to the Climate Prediction Center. We'll talk about that in a future update. Tomorrow morning about News Channel 3, live at 9, more rainfall starts to make its way up from the Gulf of Mexico. By lunchtime, best chance of rainfall along and south of I-40. Notice the temperatures here way above freezing, so all we get is just plain rainfall across much of the Mid-South. Winds will be decently breezy out of the northeast tomorrow at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Could be some gusts around 5 to 15 miles an hour. By rush hour home, picking up the kids from school, getting home for dinner, more chances of rain across much of the area. Uh, not much. Most of it should be, again, the heaviest activity, southeast Arkansas, northern parts of Mississippi. And then tomorrow night, about News Channel 3 at 6 into News Channel 3 at 10, much heavier possibility of the, the heavier rainfall coming down from the Boot Hill, southeast Missouri into eastern Arkansas, and that's going to be moving through as we go into overnight. Now, severe weather chances, yeah, not really. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Derek Hammond, Arctic Cold Front, stay tuned. We'll be talking about that in just a little while. Into tonight, the chances of severe weather at this time, the slightly pale green color here at the bottom of your screen. That is where we see the possibility of a generic threat of just thunderstorms. We're not seeing anything in the way of severe weather, according to the Storm Prediction Center, which is where this forecast comes from and which you can get online. This is not exclusive to News Channel 3. You can pick this up very easily. Now, for tomorrow, again, what you're noticing here is, again, the very light green shaded color. That's that generic threat of just thunderstorms out there. The best possibility of anything involving severe weather will be down here into around the slight risk category, which is, again, a lot higher. And that's where we see the potential for severe weather from 
roughly about the Gulf Coast of New Orleans, uh, down to the south and parts of Louisiana, all the way over to the panhandle of Florida. That's going to be the best possibility of stronger weather tomorrow. Now, here's the other thing, that if this push of moisture goes up a little higher and gives us a little bit more in the way of good, unstable, warm air filled with fuel that can make these thunderstorms pop, then we may need to see the potential of watching this slight risk category go a lot closer to the Mid-South. But that is not the way it looks right now, and hopefully the way it will be staying. By Tuesday, the threat at this time goes all the way over to the East Coast and the Florida Gulf Coast, and that's only going to be a marginal threat of severe weather. We'll be in the clear for there. Fog into tomorrow morning. May want to get a little bit of an extra start because by tomorrow we could be looking at visibilities across parts of the Mid-South, especially West Tennessee and back into Northeast Arkansas and Northwestern areas of Mississippi. I wish my telestrator would work properly. You have to go back to the old pointing method. But possibility of seeing some near zero visibilities tomorrow. Cold temperatures, high humidity, light winds. That's a very good recipe for fog, and that may be what we wind up with tomorrow. Okay, here we go. For those of you who heard the S word a few minutes ago, that's where we're going to start talking about this in just a few seconds. So for tomorrow, temperatures back in the lower 50s for highs. Chances of rain into tomorrow, and yes, we're talking about good possibilities better into the afternoon and evening. So by noon to around dinner time, we may see some thunder out there, but I'm betting most of that's going to be along and after about 6 p.m. Temperatures a bit milder on Tuesday back into the mid 50s. Rain chances early, and then much of that will be dwindling past lunchtime giving us just cloudy skies out there for the most part. Here's where we see the change in the weather, the big change coming our direction. If you have not heard about this or haven't seen the forecast yet all weekend, uh, Derek Hammond asking about this. This is going to be the high on Wednesday mostly just cloudy skies. We do have a chance of rainfall into around very late Wednesday, around midnight. That's going to be the leading edge of that next storm system coming on through. And look what it does to the temperatures. We are talking about the mid-upper 30s on Thursday into Friday and lower to mid-40s on Saturday, finally recovering to the upper 40s by about Sunday or so. This is it. This is where we start to see the problems out there. By the morning hours on the area close to Thursday morning, the cold air coming down will be just about enough to change over some of the rain to a rain snow mixture but what we are looking for is going to be again very short-lived the ground is very warm at this time so it's doubtful we're really going to be seeing anything in the way of accumulation now northwest tennessee Boot Hill, Missouri, Northeast Arkansas would be watching that uh, with a lot more interest at this point in time. For the metro area, low temperatures Thursday morning will be just above freezing, which means I would guess more rainfall out of this at this point in time. But we could see some flurries in there, and that is it. We are not going to be seeing anything at this point in time that means schools will be closed work will be closed, church services will be canceled, nothing like that is going to be expected. Yes, it's nice to see the nice little white furries drifting on down and everything looking very nice for the possibility of our really good first snow out there, but it's not going to be happening. It's going to be just rain mixed with snow, and so far, that's what we've got in the forecast. Now, again, this is several days away, and as we get closer and closer, as this moves in time toward us, this is going to come a lot closer into focus. Could this change? Could get this get even more powerful? Yes, absolutely. Could this dwindle entirely? Yes, that's very possible as well. Those of you who complain about the fact that there is change in the forecast and it's not the same here as it is closer on, and why can't we be more accurate? Because you live on an active, dynamic, changing planet, and these things happen that way. So this is why we bring you these forecasts as often as we do on News Channel 3 to make you stay informed as much as possible. So again, this is going to be the main thing we see out of this flurries mixed with rainfall with little, if any, accumulation out of that. So those of you who are wanting to get the season's first snowman building contest going on, you may have to postpone. Okay, enough about snow at this time. Temperatures back Friday morning in the lower 20s. Kids at the bus stop going to need a lot of layers out that direction. 30s for highs on Friday and just above freezing, but plenty of sunshine out there. Next chance of rainfall in the forecast looks like it's going to be after next weekend, toward about next Monday. Chances of showers only so far, but again, that also could change. And the cold snap 
is going to be a pretty quick snap at this time. 40s by Saturday, Sunday, back closer to normal for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Maybe a chance of a shower early on next Tuesday, but that's really going to be about all that we see there. Okay, weather where the troops are heading overseas. For those of you who have friends or loved ones in and around the Persian Gulf, got numbers back in the 50s around Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait at the International Airport, 56 degrees, Doha in and around Qatar, looking at numbers back in the lower 70s, and Bahrain, partly to mostly cloudy and temperatures back into the lower 70s out there. Heading to Iraq, temperatures again not doing too bad, no sandstorms or major weather going on through, which can happen pretty easily at this time of the year. 41 in Mosul, 48 in Baghdad, 54 degrees in Najaf, and 51 one in Basra, where it's just about before sunrise early Monday morning over on the other side of the planet. Afghanistan, anybody serving in that location? Some pretty mild weather up that direction earlier today, back in the 70s around Kandahar and Herat. 41 in Kandahar, partly cloudy, Herat 51 degrees. 44 with mostly sunny skies right after sunrise around the Kabul airport and Faizabad back up toward the mountains looking back into the 30s with plenty of sunshine there. Heading to the opposite side of the ocean side of the United States into the DMZ and southward. 45 degrees in Chunchan, South Korea. 48 in Seoul with mostly clear skies in around Pusan. 50 degrees there. 43 degrees in Taegu and around 53 with a lot of clouds in and around Kunsan. Stay tuned and I'll tell you where to get more of this information coming up here in just a little bit. Todd Demers has more in your forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. And if you've got any weather pictures out there, please make certain you forward them to me. Uh, Aonic underscore WREG3, that's the best place to go to uh, to keep an eye on what's going on so that I can tweet them to everybody else. You're already on this page, so you don't need to know that address. And Aonic, no underscore necessary, available at Aonic WREG3 on Instagram, also on Google+, also on SoundCloud, also on... Well, a whole bunch of stuff. You don't have enough time to study for stuff like that. But And I'm still trying to get Snapchat figured out. Uh, Nina Harrelson promised to help me. Uh, tune into her on News Channel 3 Daybreak on the weekends. My co-anchor promised to help me learn a little bit more about Snapchat there. Now, where to get that information I was telling you about in regards to whether where the troops are. Again, if you want to keep an eye as to what's going on out there, that information in and around the entire world, that's according to some people out there, that's classified and that's giving free information to terrorists not the way it works there's weather information across the entire world that everybody can access and it's not to be used for anything in the way of major uh, terrorist events or anything like that is accessible by common citizens like you and me and we can use it for research or for forecasting or for travel or for whatever and this is going to be one of the better uh, you can go to for that this is with the world meteorological organization the world weather information Service service. It's a great place to go to for more on that. And that is available at worldweather.wmo.int. Just barely visible up there in the upper uh, corner of your screen. Again, worldweather.wmo.int. INT, that's going to be one of the best places you can go to, again, for that information. And this, uh, again, covers the entire planet. You can get climatological information. You can get forecast information. You can get all sorts of things uh, in and around portions of the entire world. Uh, let's go back over to around the area close to uh, Afghanistan. We'll focus in and see what we've got uh, over here for Kabul. You can click on this. You can get uh, climate information. You can get information about uh, sunrise and sunset data uh, from the WMO. You can also get information uh, at some cities anyway. You can get information about the forecast, but all that is available again through the World Meteorological Organization, and that's again at worldweather.wmo.int, and that's where you can get again a ton of great information uh, in and around portions of the entire world. We'll bring you up to date on more about this as we get closer into the holidays because again, a lot of people traveling out there, we want to make certain everybody has as much weather information as possible to help keep you updated on what's going on. You can even get uh, the forecast information for Memphis and parts of the Mid-South. So that's available out there for you to keep an eye on what's going on. Climatological data is also available there. 
and we'll keep you up to date on that uh, as well. Now, coming up tonight, we'll be on on News Channel 3 at 10. That'll be, again, our last for the weekend. And Todd Demers will have more for you coming up bright and early tomorrow morning. We'll be doing more science coming up throughout the rest of the week on both our weather overtime segments, so stay tuned for that. And also, don't forget, uh, we'll be talking astronomy on our Skyblog system. If you don't know about all the astronomical uh, data available to you, we'll talk more about that. There is a lot of stuff you can do with astronomy even though you're going to be indoors because of the clouds or rainfall and stuff like that and you can take a look at some amazing amounts of data out there and we'll feature more about that coming up throughout the next several days so even though it's cloudy outside stay tuned to news channel 3 and we'll give you updates on the astronomy forecast for more on that if anything does turn strong or severe stay tuned to tim and jim coming up tomorrow more details on the complete forecast Again, tomorrow morning on Daybreak with Todd, and stay tuned for Tim and Jim tomorrow evening. If anything does turn rough and tumble, they will stick around and let you know more about that. I'll have more on the News Channel 3 uh, forecast at 10, so stay tuned for more details there. Questions or other concerns, contact me at austin.onic at wreg.com. That'll wrap it up for our quick weather edition for 8 o'clock this evening. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. Hope you have a safe week coming up, and stay tuned to News Channel 3 for updates throughout the rest of the week. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining me for tonight's quick weather update and we'll see you again on news channel 3 on air and online if i can get this button to work that would be great